वेलकम टू सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट वीकली मार्केट राउंड अप थर्ड फेब्रुआर टू थाउजेंड एट्टीन आई एम सगर नंदी चीफ एनालिस्ट एंड ट्रेडर एट सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट बेस्ट इन सिंगापुर आई उल नट टेक टाइम टू इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड टू नो मोर अबाउट मी द कम्पनी सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट और मोर इम्पर्टेंटली हाउ इट मे हेल्प इन योर ट्रेडिंग यू मे भिजिट द वेबसाइट superior profit dot co and click on the about me before we begin we go through the standard disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on superior profit trading system the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading past performance is no guarantee of future return superior profit is not an investment advisor this session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience as usual we will study several commodities oil and gold using technical charts these tend to impact related stocks rising tide lifts all boats when the market goes up it tends to lift many stocks with it and when the market goes down many stocks go down together we study the broad market's strength or weakness as was in this way using market breadth of nasdaq and nyse and also using technical charts of the four broad market etfs when we trade in alignment with industry's rotation it adds additional edges to the trades we study this using q edge industry scorecard and heat map we'll see that the industries were weak across the board along the way we may review some of the trade examples from q forum and look for potential trades for the coming week that was the last slide of the presentation let's move to live system we start our commodity study using oil the us o oil etf we are looking at uso using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart together we call this at a glance template this is the template that helps us identify potential trade opportunities at the right edge of the chart only in few seconds that's why we call it at a glance template last week i had mentioned this bearish headwind signal in the daily chart and based on that suggested to be careful and put protect profit stop that stop was not hit last week on friday it went up again this week monday it displayed a bearish headwind again on tuesday it dropped however recovered during the week it closed the week with a very narrow body candle with both upper tail and lower tail in the weekly chart this is an indecisive shape candle and the weekly candle color is yellow neutral weekly had also displayed bearish headwind two weeks earlier this week the candle is indecisive however price closed from previous week's close lower and it came down with very high activity from the daily chart we don't see any clear trend it is moving up down up down in a narrow range so we are not going to take any trade right now until there is more clarity on us oils direction 
looking at the multiple bearish headwind signals, three in daily and one in weekly, and the fact that USO has gone up considerably from the bottom, bottom of July 2017. If one is holding profitable long position in oil, it may be wise to book some profit or at minimum protect profit using stop order. Gold also displayed multiple bearish headwind signals in the daily chart and this week it pulled back. Last week I had mentioned the bearish headwind in daily chart and noted that it appeared precisely at the same time that gold hit the long term memory resistance in the weekly chart and bounced down from there. An alert trader could use real time fine tune chart to take an extremely profitable and very low risk bearish trade in gold at that point. Let me switch to fine tune chart and explain how the real time chart user could take the short trade. We are now looking at gold using the daily chart on the right hand side and fine tune 10 minute chart on the left hand side. We have aligned the two charts to bring these days beginning to the left of the 10 minute chart. On that day after market open, early range high and early range low were formed. We were watching gold to see if it hits the weekly memory resistance, which was precisely at this level. It indeed went up and hit that memory resistance in weekly and tilted down. When it closed below this green pivot line on this magenta candle, it created a false upside breakout. At that time, activity was also very high. Using the existence of weekly memory resistance and the false upside breakout on 10 minute chart, one could take a short trade right at the close of this magenta candle put stop just above the day's high. On the same day it dropped heavily so a day trader could easily book partial profit and hold the remaining position to let profit run closing enough position so that the entire trade is risk free from that time onward. This is a very standard way that Q real time traders can use to take very low risk precise entry of day trades or also precise entry of swing trades by using the resistance in a longer time frame chart weekly in this case to look for the trade entry and executing the trade confidently when all the signals are met. Right now at the right edge in daily chart, gold's flow candle color is magenta that is bearish, however the candle has a lower tail. So we are not going to take any short trade. Also another reason for not taking the short trade is because the weekly candle color is not magenta yet. That is neither the weekly nor the daily are meeting the checklist conditions for taking a go with flow trend following short trade. We may watch gold to see where it goes in subsequent days to decide if there is a long or a short trade set. Right now there is no trade setup at the right edge. Next we look at market breadth 
we study market breadth using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index weekly charts. Because we are using broad market indices and weekly charts, this study is to be used for longer term investment decision, not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. Over longer term, clearly both NASDAQ and NYSE are in uptrend. It will take a while before they turn into downtrend with lower highs and lower lows. Looking at this specific week, we see NASDAQ had a kind of reversal bar in the weekly chart. The overbought condition went away. It is displaying a bear release signal and the same bear release signal has appeared in the NYSE weekly chart as well. NYSE candle color has flipped from green to red without going through the neutral yellow color. Showing that the reversal in case of NYSE was more abrupt. In NASDAQ, the candle color has changed from green to yellow. The candle shape is very bearish. Still, the switch from bullishness to weakness is not as sharp as in case of NYS. Market breadth is decidedly bearish this week. Last couple of weeks, market breadth was steadily going up, so much so that it was hitting long term peaks. And this week, it reversed sharply taking out the long term traps of many of the internals. In fact, it breached the long term trap of all the six internals. All the six internals declined sharply and all of them closed negative. This is a very sharp reversal from one week ago and from 10 days ago. It seems that market is reaching a climax, sucking in the very late bull traders in the last four weeks and then reversing, trapping the bulls at the very top. We will be able to confirm that in the coming weeks, whether that hypothesis is true or not. However, the data of this week strongly points to that that is supported not only by this market breadth study but also from the broad market ETFs and sector industry studies that we will look at later. Summarizing on market breadth, over longer term both NASDAQ and NYSE are in uptrend. However, internals weakened sharply, the indices also drop sharply this way. The fact that over longer term it is in uptrend may not be any reason to start thinking of buying the dips right now. The weakness is pervasive in the market and let us look at the broad market ETFs and sector industry studies to confirm that. Just like NYAC switched from bullish to bearish weekly color SPY also switched from bullish to bearish candle color in the weekly chart without going through the neutral yellow color. SPY dropped with very high activity in the weekly chart. Interestingly, it displayed a bearish headwind signal right at the very top. I keep on mentioning whenever the headwind signal comes, it is better to be careful and protect profit with trailing stock. If not, book some profit as well. That decision came very handy because SPY dropped heavily. 
on Friday it closed right on top of the memory support line in daily. The candle shape was very bearish. It opened with a gap down and continued to decline heavily throughout the day. Candle color is also very bearish. Still it is resting right on top of the memory line. So one may need to be careful and watch for a possible reversal. There is no trade setup right now on SPY because it is resting right on top of the memory support. An alert trader could use the bearish headwind signal to initiate a very low risk bearish trade. Especially so using real time fine tuning chart. The bearish headwind signal starts showing up on real time chart. So one didn't have to wait for this day's close to take a short trade. One could use fine tune real time chart to take a short trade during the day, probably book some profit, keep stop in a way that the entire trade is risk free from that time onward. Just like the trade I explained in GLT. A short taken in that way would have been extremely profitable by now. Especially show using put options. In the last market roundup, I had also mentioned that sometimes it is possible to take out of the money put options to multiply profit many times. Usually I suggest and myself take in the money options either put or call for bearish and bullish trades respectively. However, sometimes depending on the weakness of the stock of the industry of the market, it is possible to take out of the money put options and they become extremely profitable very fast. What I tend to do is quickly book partial profit to make sure that the entire trade is risk free. How that is possible is to book for example half profit once 100% profit is reached. That returns my entire investment capital and I am happy to try to let profit run on house money for the remaining period till expiry. I think I explained one such very profitable trade in the previous market roundup using my land. If I have time, I will demonstrate several such very profitable trades that I took this week. It was possible to take such trades not only in SPY but in all the other broad market ETFs as well. Let's look at them. QQQ also switched sharply and unlike NASDAQ broad market index, it switched from bullish color to bearish color without going through the neutral color. So the reversal was sharp in QQQ. It came down with very heavy activity. QQQ also displayed bearish headwind signal on Monday. Just as was the case for SPY. And one could take very profitable put option straight at that point. Right now it has dropped somewhat. So I am not going to take any new swing short trade in QQQ right now. However, there is still some distance to the memory support line. Using intraday charts, Q fine tune template, if we see QQQ is dropping, it is possible to initiate low risk day trades or precise entry of swing trades. We may keep an eye for that. However, I will not start taking swing short trades based on daily charts right now. Daya again sharply reversed in weekly chart, color changing from cyan to magenta without going through yellow color, dropped with very heavy activity in the weekly chart. Daya also displayed a bearish headwind on this Monday. After that it dropped sharply. One could again take a very low risk put options trade on Daya. 
that turned out to be very profitable. Right now, Daya has already dropped somewhat, so I'm not going to initiate a swing trade using daily charts right now. The stop will be far away. One might try to take a short trade using real time chart, then the stop loss will be nearby. There is some distance to the next memory support line. So there is a chance it will decline further before trying to recover. You may keep an eye on that. IWM, this was the weakest of the four broad market ETFs. I have been observing that and sharing that based on the relative performance tilting down. This week IWM also dropped and came precisely to the daily memory support and also the weekly memory support lines. This is the only ETF that didn't display bearish entry. In one of the previous roundups, I had studied the home building industry and I showed that multiple stocks in home building displayed bearish headwind around the same time and all of them dropped heavily. And I had mentioned that when multiple bearish headwinds come in same industry at same time, the weakness is more pronounced. The same concept could be applied this week. On Monday, SPY, QQQ and DIA, all three of them displayed bearish headwind. It started displaying the bearish headwind soon after market open. Because the bearish headwind came in all the three bigger ETFs, we could take the put option trade using fine tune chart with more confidence. Very low risk and ended up being extremely profitable trades. We see that two of the ETFs, SPY and IWM are resting right on support and two DIA and QQQ are a bit away from support. We'll see which one becomes more forceful, the support becomes more forceful or the decline of QQQ DIA becomes more forceful. We saw very sharp bearish indication from market breadth. We saw sharp decline in all the broad market ETFs, all pointing to possible climax. This sense of capitulation is also there in the sector and industry studies. This is the sector performance of 11 economic sectors, but this is the performance of one week ago. I wanted to share this side by side to demonstrate the force with which the reversal happened. In the sector performance graph, we study 11 economic sectors across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week, the current week. The green bar performance of one week ago and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together they constitute performance of four weeks or about one month. Any bar coming to the right of zero line indicates the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left of the zero line indicates the sector went down. This is the sector performance of one week ago. In last market roundup, we studied this and we saw all the 11 sectors ended in the positive. That happened after very, very, very long time. It is unusual to see all the sectors gaining and they gain significantly. What about this week? This is the graph of the current week. The exact reverse happened. All the 11 sectors declined and they declined heavily. This also points to the possibility of a climax where the late traders are sucked into taking long trades only to trap them with a very sharp reversal. This week's loss in all the 11 sectors is in high contrast to previous week's gain in all of them. 
this reversal across the board seems like a case of capitulation. I had mentioned in previous roundups to be careful and avoid new buy in overbought stocks either fundamentally overbought or technically overbought and protecting long positions with stop orders. Following that one was able to preserve capital and then using very straight setups we could take some very profitable short trades. I will share some of them. Eight of the sectors are still positive over one month period showing that over the longer term the trend is still up. Therefore the people who could enter the long positions earlier they are not in much pain they had very large profit over many months and this week's drop was sharp but relative to the gain of last 12 months that was a small percentage so the q long-term investors had no issue taking this sharp decline of this week in their stride the people who were at great pain were the people who tried to enter the market at the last moment. That is not the superior profit way. We try to avoid overbought stocks both fundamentally as well as technically. Even though the longer term trend is still bullish, that is no reason to start taking long trades, trying to buy the dip because it looks like a possible climax meltdown at the top and one may be patient to wait for better opportunities than to jump into the market right now with long trades. Profitable short trades are abundant right now. This weakness in sectors is very clearly reflected in the industries as well. Every week we study the 10 best performing industries. This week we didn't have 10 industries which ended in the positive. Only 6 ended in the positive and that too by a relatively small percentage. Maybe except the housewares and specialties. The rest 5 that increased this week increased by smaller percentages relative to the declining industries. Made in industry is one that gained this was an accelerating industry in the previous week. Once again, this gain was foretold by the industry accelerating in QH scorecard. Houseware and specialties gain this week. It reversed from weak score of many months. However, as the overall market is weak across the board, this may not be a time to start looking for long positions in this or any other industry. Internet and direct market retail. It increased this way. However, this increase was largely due to shutter flies, 40% up move after earnings. Shutterfly pierced long term watermark resistance in weekly and monthly charts. The market is very weak, so you may watch out for a possible reversal back inside the watermark resistance if the market continues to weaken. And that may give a very profitable shorting the very top of this stock. It went up 40% in one way. If it starts to go down, a short trade will be very profitable, especially with put options if the bid ask spreads are narrow enough. Aerospace and defense declined this week. Boeing was going up for a long time and now completed a false upside breakout with bearish headwind in daily chart. Another stock in same industry, United Technologies, also started to drop after displaying bearish attack. Both of these stocks are relatively strong relative to peers in terms of fundamentals. Still if the market goes down this may give shorting the top trade opportunities. Let's have a look at aerospace and defense in QH. Drill down 
to the stocks and finally look at their technical charts. Every time we open QEdge, it analyzes 11 economic sectors and more than 170 industry groups across 12 monthly periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day periods. For each of the periods, it assigns a score. Let's look at the primary 5 days period. QEdge assigns a score of 1 to the weakest industry or sector, sector in this case, and a large number to the strongest item. Also applies a heat map from magenta to cyan, from weakest to the strongest one. The same calculation is done for the 170 plus industries. Let's look for the aerospace industry. Instantly from the heat map we see that aerospace and defense was strong for a long time, still strong but starting to weaken. The weakening is showing up as magenta color over the paste columns. A strong industry's weakness is first displayed in the paste columns by magenta color before it shows up in the industry score columns over one days, two days and then five days. We can click the drill down button to see the underlying stocks. QH retrieves data from Thomson Reuters icon. If we click this button, it will go to Thomson Reuters again get the data on all the stocks, calculate vital statistics and many other calculations. Filtering for Boeing, we see it relatively it is pretty strong. We know that instantly from the cyan color in relative valuation. Earnings quality is also very high. What about United Technologies? UTX also has strong relative valuation. Earnings quality is not as good as Boeing, it is yellow in the middle. Fundamentally these two stocks are strong. The industry was strong, just starting to decelerate now. Still, in spite of the industry's relative strength, in spite of these two stocks' fundamental strength, when the market declines, these may decline as well. A rising tide lifts all boats and an ebbing tide may lower all boats as well. Let's look at these two stock charts. We are looking at Boeing using at a glance template. Boeing had earnings this week. It tried to go up above the weekly watermark level but reversed. This week's candle color is cyan bullish, the candle shape is mixed. It has hollow body but upper tail. Last couple of weeks it is going up with very heavy activity. This may point to a possible capitulation as well if next week it drops from this watermark resistance level. In the daily chart, the same False upside breakout is shown. Weekly had a false upside breakout and daily had a false upside breakout as well. After earnings it gapped up. That day closed lower shown by the solid body and since then it dropped further. On Friday it has displayed a bearish headwind signal. Therefore, Boeing has a false upside breakout in daily chart as well as weekly chart, has very heavy activity in both daily and weekly and also has a bearish headwind signal on Friday. Combining all these and the market's weakness, one could take a very low risk short trade in Boeing, probably using put options. 
in fact the alert trader could start taking the short trade right on this day when it went up after earnings and started to go down those are possible gap short day trades and because the whole market was weakening one could hold part of that position as possible swing trade if somebody entered the trade at that point that trade is already very profitable there is a possible short trade entry on monday as well united technologies also went up strongly had earnings one week ago that week was an up week and this week it reversed sharply in the weekly chart in daily it tried to go above the watermark resistance level but reversed completing a false upside breakout it also displayed a bearish headwind in fact on the bearish headwind day it already completed the false upside breakout so one could take a short trade on that day itself by now that trade is already profitable from the best performing industries we see that market is very weak only six industries could end in the positive out of 170 plus industries and the worst performing industries decline by much larger percentages motorcycle manufacturers decline by 14% and the best of the worst here construction material dropped by about 9% very large drops across the board semiconductor equipment is one of the worst performers it decelerated one week ago this week it became one of the worst performers once again showing that q edge acceleration deceleration are best predictors of future industry moves in the previous round up i mentioned four stocks ichr mksi amet and lrcx that were making double top not bottom it should be double top that we are making double top and i advised caution on long position holding most of them dropped significantly here again we could take advantage of the industry decelerating one week ago look up the charts observe that they were nearing double top formation and be cautious about long position holdings let's look at these four stocks to see how they performed this week in the weekly chart we can see ichr came very close to the previous top and sharply declined from there in the daily chart it completed a false upside breakout tried to go above this watermark resistance and declined one could take a short trade right at the close of this red candle that was bearish color as well as bearish shape stop would be just above recent high that trade ended up as a very profitable trade we could be prepared to take the trade based on the market round up discussion one week ago and take that trade confidently on this red candle this week LRCX also created a double top one week ago and this week dropped sharply again one could take a short trade on this magenta candle probably using real time fine tune chart not using daily chart by the end of the day it had already declined significantly using real time fine tune chart one could take a short around 210 price range another double top in the weekly work beautifully emet couldn't complete the double top 
fell before that. One could at least be careful with existing long positions and protect profit. The last one was MKSI. It is inside a triangle pattern in the weekly chart. Earnings is over. If it goes up next week and then reverses, goes up above the watermark in weekly and reverses, it will create a false upside breakout. The same reversal may happen in the daily chart. If that happens, we may try to short it right at the watermark level as it completes the false upside breakout. If it doesn't go up, I may not like to short it right now because there is a memory support nearby. In general, based on last week's discussion, we could be cautious in some of the stocks, protect profit and in some of the other stocks, take profitable short trades. Coal and consumable fuels, it dropped. Q industry scorecard helped to identify the exact turning point once again. From the heat map color code, we will look at it. These two stocks, Cloud Peak Energy and Uranium Energy, CLD and UAC, both declined significantly after displaying bearish shed wind in weekly and daily respectively. We keep on seeing that after bearish shed wind comes, there is high probability it will reverse. At minimum, I always suggest to protect profit with stop loss order. CLD had given a trend following go through short signal on 29th Jan and UEC had given a short opportunity with false upside breakout at prior headwind price level on 8th Jan. Both of these turned out to be very profitable trades. You could catch the very top of EVC, the very top. And this stock was also fundamentally weak. Let's have a look at QH, look at coal and consumable fuels industry, drill down to the stocks and finally look at their technical charts. In QH, to look for the worst performing industries, we sort over primary five days period, smallest to largest. The weakest industries come to the top. Coal and consumable fuels is the second worst performing industry of this week. And it is displaying a beautiful gradual transition from strength to weakness. This is how QH can help us capture the exact turning point in an industry. Just at the time, the scorecard color changes from cyan to magenta. We can drill down to its stocks. Of the four stocks in this industry, UEC was overvalued and it has dropped now. Still it is overvalued, so it must have been overvalued before the drop. CLD is optimally valued in this peer group. However, it had weakness in the technical charts. Both of them dropped heavily. Let's look at their charts to see how we could profit from these stocks, taking bearish trades. In the weekly chart, CLD had displayed a bearish headwind. After that, price dropped in the daily chart and one could take a short trade on this magenta flow color candle putting stock just above recent high considering this as recent high and booking initial profit at the yellow direction support line that trade worked out very well it accelerated the decline on friday so there is no reason to Exit full position, partial position could be held. This is more true because the industry is weak. We are looking at UEC. This was in the same industry that was weakening coal and consumable fuels and the stock itself was fundamentally overbought. 
in the weekly chart it tried to go above the watermark resistance coming from far away long term watermark resistance and decline from there completing a beautiful false upside breakout earnings was already over when it reached the very top it also displayed a bearish headwind in daily after that price dipped and recovered came to the same bearish headwind level in fact tried to go above the watermark and reversed on this yellow candle creating a false upside breakout in daily as well i keep on mentioning after bearish headwind if price drops recovers to the same price level and drops again more selling may be left those tend to give very low risk very profitable short trade opportunities from there you will see drop beautifully very large reward risk ratio profitable short trade we could take them easily and confidently based on top down analysis using q edge then q vital fundamentals and using technical charts every week we study the accelerating industries because they tend to be the best performers in subsequent weeks how far the broad market is very bearish across the board so it is not a time to look for long trades by drilling down the accelerating industries houseware and specialties accelerated fastest and this is the only one that actually increased all the other accelerating industries in fact declined meaning one week earlier they declined over 10 days period it declined but this week it declined but less it's in a way accelerating but still declining rate of decline is going down overall market is very bearish so we are not going to drill down into any of these industries looking for long trades it's time to protect profit on long positions and take very profitable short trades decelerating industries this is of higher interest in the current market situation decelerating industries tend to be the worst performers in subsequent weeks all the 10 decelerating industries flipped from an increase to decline between previous and the current week again pointing to the fact that the market sucked in the late buyers a lot of them and swiftly reversed trapping the bulls at the top the late bulls at the top trading companies and distributors decelerated it was healthy for many months we know from the cyan color from industry age scorecard it was cyan color so it was healthy for many months and using the bearish magenta color in recent times you could catch the exact turning point and take profitable bearish trades kush bottles is one such stock kshb gave a profitable go with flow short setup on thursday this week 1st february not kshb kshb was overvalued in fundamentals as well another stock triton international trtn also dropped after giving a go with flow short setup on same 1st february breaking out of a narrow range Let's look at QH to see how beautifully the color transition could help us identify the industry's weakness, and then look at these two charts: KSHP, TRTN. In QH, to look for decelerating industries, we sort on the base five days column, from smallest to largest. The industries that are losing steam fast come to the top. trading companies and distributors was cyan for many months strong and this week it declined sharply and in fact became bearish we could drill down to look at the stocks calculate the vital statistics by clicking the calculator button trtn this stock is 
relatively stronger and KSHP Kush bottles it is very weak fundamentally as well both of them declined this week let's look at their charts KSHP and TRTN KSHP had earnings at this time then it came down tried to recover fell again we could take a short trade on this magenta color candle putting stop either here or here and so far it is working well we could take this trade because after earnings it dropped created lower high it was about to create lower low at this point this stock was fundamentally overvalued and the industry was weakening all the factors were weak for this trade giving us additional confidence to take the short trade the other stock in this industry was trtn fundamentally it was strong relative to peers however the industry was weak the overall market was very weak and on this magenta candle it broke below all the memory support lines that were there at that time we could take a shot at the close of this day put stop somewhere here or here and it has given large profit already by friday the daily candle shape is very bearish friday's drop was with extreme high activity weekly candle shape color all are bearish industry is bearish market is very bearish so there will not be any reason to book full profit it is important sometimes to book partial profit and if the market industry stock all are weak to hold partial position that way we can let profit run and make very large profit in some of the trades at the same time it is always good to book some profit and use trailing stop so that the entire trade is risk free and we can focus on subsequent trades that come along our way let me share some of the out of the money put options trade that could be taken this is dow jones industrial average it had displayed a bearish headwind signal in the daily chart somewhere around that time i took a put options trade out of the money it was 255 strike so it was quite a bit out of the money i'm not sure exactly which day i took the trade but it dropped heavily and as of friday's close it has 208 percent profit the way i take these trades is to quickly book enough profits to get back my capital so the moment i have 100 percent profit i can book half of my position thereby getting my money back and let the house money run with the profit that is the situation with dia right now it is bearish so i have no reason to try to book the entire position these options are expiring in february it still has some days left i am in no hurry to close it right now and anyway i have got my money back IWM didn't display bearish headwind but it was the weakest of the four ETFs we were discussing it for many weeks that IWM was the weakest therefore if I took a short trade in DIA it makes sense to take one in IWM as well again using out of the money put options I have booked enough profit to get back my money and it has to 39% profit as of Friday's close on the remaining position i in fact took a short trade on qqq also it had more than 100 percent profit by mistake i closed the entire position i clicked different quantity <laughs> full quantity but that's okay i didn't try to re-enter it again that's fine these were not the only profitable trades i could take but I wanted to share these few trades following what I discussed in the previous week's roundup.
that sometimes if you are studying market carefully you are able to take out of the money put options and get very large profit because they are out of the money they are not our standard guideline trends therefore i suggest only to use small portion of your capital it is not a good idea to look at the huge percentage profit and put significant amount of capital in these trades i usually take these trades with a very small part of my total capital these were not the only profitable trades remember i mentioned about home building stocks i think in the previous round up where berry shedwind came in many of them and there were profitable trades caa also displayed berry shedwind i had taken a trade in caa again using out of the money put options already booked enough profit to get my money back and the remaining position has 293% profit i could take this trade even more confidently than spy dia qqq because those are broad market etfs broad market is weak that was supporting those trades but this trade had further support from the weakness of the home building industry as well and this specific stocks berry shedwind as well so it was an easy trade to take with very large profit jnj gave a very beautiful go with flow short trade setup on this magenta candle from the top it dropped at earnings then tried to go back up reversed right from value area giving us a beautiful go with flow short trade this trade now has 496% profit on remaining position again i have got my money back i had few long positions those were in stocks that were fundamentally strong that were either giving high dividend like ctl or the industry was strengthening like marine industries in marine industry i had a trade ssw it had given more than 100% profit using options so i could book enough profit to get my money back then i saw ssw reversed let's look at the chart this is cispan corporation in marine industry i had discussed it in previous market roundups explaining that right at the bottom in one of these two days we could buy an out of the money call option at very low price as it went up it had large profit more than 100% so i booked enough lots to get my money back fundamentally the industry was strong even this week it is one of the strongest the stock was also relatively strong still the stock fell down because i had my money back i had no worries i just closed my enter position better than break even so i still had some small profit on the remaining position this shows it is important to book profit not hope that every trade will keep on going in the direction that we intend it to go i also had a trade in century link that was a strong stock as well let's look at that in century link a fundamentally strong stock it was given more than 14% dividend at the bottom i could trade the stock along the way make profit then it was moving in narrow range as it broke out i took another call option trade however the market was weak this week and my call options was getting into loss and i saw that even telecom industry sector everything was declining so i decided to cut my loss came out of centurylink i had discussed earlier another fundamentally strong stock in real estate cbl when i took the trade the decision was based on relative valuation of the stock it was shown in vital statistics and in the weekly chart it was creating a beautiful base and the base was there in the daily chart as well i took the trade using stocks 
it was maintaining the base for a long time. I had nothing to worry. However, this week, as the whole market dipped, every sector dipped, this stock also dipped. As I saw and shared many times in this roundup, when the whole market drops, even the fundamentally strong stocks drop. So I had no reason to hold on to this long position also. I cut my loss and exited. While I was doing these trades during the week, I noted that all my long trades, I could cut loss with small, small losses and exit. In some cases, still having profit like in CISPAN and in some cases like CBL, cut my loss. And my short trades were giving very large profit. That was pointing to a scenario that market is reversing. I could cut my losses on the long positions following discipline using Q systems, very clear indication on Q edge, Q vital, Q charts and I could take very profitable short trades. That's why I mentioned this market or any market. If we follow discipline, we can make profit. We don't have to get married to a particular trade and hope for it to work out. Every trade doesn't need to work out. Let's summarize. Market breadth, the market ETFs, sectors, industries, all are pointing to possible climax. The very large rate of ascent of past four weeks reversed this week. The reversal was not confined to few sectors or few industries. All the sectors decline. How many industries decline? Over five days, that is this week, we see only six industries managed to go up. 167 went down. That is all pervasive weakness in the market. During industry analysis, we saw even the six that went up, went up by relatively smaller percentages. This is not a time to try to take new long trades, not even trying to buy the dips. We may wait patiently for taking our long trades. Meanwhile, we may protect profit in long positions using stop and then certainly take short trades. There are abundant short trades in this market. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.